I've got the bare bones of one of Mike Coughlin's trance tracks that he's provided for us for the trance course. And I've got it set up here because I'm going to use it to demonstrate one of the MIDI plugins that you can use within Cubase. And it's the arpeggiator. Okay. In fact, there are a couple of arpeggiators inside Cubase, but there's one that I'm going to focus on. Let me show you what we've got so far. And as I said, it's just the bare bones. It's not a complete version of the track. And uh, this is something that Mike put together called Eternally. So this is a recreation in Cubase and it's not fully finished. Just need to get this arpeggio working really to start progressing on it. So these elements at the moment are all coming from Halion Ones. A little bit of automation as you can see. So that's the actual notes that we're going to be using. It's not set up, it's all sounding pretty rough at the moment, but uh, let's use this as a demonstration. So I'm going to solo, just going to select the part and push P to put the locators left and right around that. And let's come over to the MIDI inserts and drop down. So you've got two arpeggiators, the Apache and the Apache SX. The Apache is a cut down version I'll show you. So not as much detail as the Apache SX here. Very powerful arpeggiator. And what this is going to do is it's going to convert these MIDI notes that we have here into a sequenced pattern. So it's a really handy thing for working out riffs, makes life a lot easier when you're using a tool like this. The default settings are set to the 16th grid. I'll show you what happens if we change that. And the direction is up and down. And in order for you to fully understand what's happening, what I'm going to do is we're going to look at the end result of the MIDI data after the arpeggio has been created because it's all happening in real time. At the moment, even with this plugin running, we will not see these notes turn into the arpeggio. It will just happen in real time through that MIDI plugin. So let's have a look how it is for the moment. <laughs> So it's sounding very, very different, of course, to how it was before. Now, let me change the actual step size. Let's change it to a different grid. Have a listen. So, so long as the keys are held down, these alternating sequence notes would occur. And there's a real contrast. Let's go for 32, so really fast. But it's sounding a little bit of a mess there. So let's go back to the 16s, which is very traditional. Let me show you what it looks like with the actual data imprinted into the MIDI part. So let's just close these windows down for the moment. To do this, it's solo, so that's good. I'm going to right click, come down to MIDI, and we're going to say Merge MIDI in Loop, and make sure that Include Inserts is ticked. I'm going to click on here, and let's take a look. There we go. You can see the actual end result data. So these sequenced notes that create the actual pattern. Okay, so if you have a look, you can see that the first note in the chord is the starting point that goes to the next one and it goes up and then comes down again. There's this alternating up and down pattern. And the reason for that is because in the Apache SX, the direction is set to up and down. If we'd have done it differently, we would see a different result. So I'm going to undo and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select down and let's bring that one in. There we go. You can see the last note in the chord is the first one now and it's coming down in this order. So it's coming down. It changes the feel. You know, what we get is a different pattern. Let me just undo that and let's just have a listen to these variations. So the first one was up and down. <laughs> And let's now do down.
very different pattern and that's because if you have a think about it we've got three notes occurring so it creates this interesting variation and with the up There are some other choices as well. You can see there's a really big list here. So I would recommend you explore some of those for yourselves. I liked the sound of the up and down. I thought that felt very traditional in a real kind of authentic, uplifting trance kind of context. So let me take that off. Let's have a listen to that section just before. So as you can hear, the arpeggio in this example really does bring that to life. So, you know, it's very, very handy plugin for particularly these kind of riffs, but there are other ways of using it and we'll be looking at that in another video.